And for those of you who haven't met Ron, Ron Miller, um, he is our new tech facilitator. You'll see him floating around, and frankly, I've been remiss and haven't spent enough time to even get to know him, but I know Alicia has uh, gotten him here today to uh, talk to us. So if you can't see uh, us, we don't want to see your back, no offense. You, you guys need to turn around a little bit, and i also like to thank Allison for video and everything today. For the people who have sports and what have you, they'll make sure they get this presentation so there's no real skipping faculty meetings anymore. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thanks, Allison. Thanks to technology. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, like, like Dan said, I'm Ron Miller, and of course, Rich Riley has decided to go back into the classroom. He's back teaching in uh, the middle school. Uh, many of you know that, probably most of you know that. And now I have some pretty big shoes to fill. And I was asked to put together something for an iPad in terms of just some iPad basics and how you're going to be using it here in the high school. Now, this is not going to be some in-depth presentation about all the whistles and bells of iPads and all about technology and so on. Many of you will say, oh, wow, that's simple, easy. I know that. I can do that in my sleep. And that's fine. I have to start from somewhere. You guys right now are all the experts. You're the experts because I don't know Pennsville. I come in from the outside, and I have to learn the kind of things that you're doing in your school uh, with your technology that you have here, what's working, what's not, great uh, ideas and, and, and things that you're working with in your classroom with your kids, you're going to be my mentor for that. And I'm going to be coming around trying to take advantage of that, not in an observational way, but just in a way so I can learn from you. Because right now, it, I mean, it may sound cliche, but we are a team. And I have to work as part of that team. And that being said, I need to have that feedback from you. So. Please bear with me as I try to get my feet on the ground. I can say right now that your principal and vice principal have put a lot of faith in me because of the fact they have no idea what I'm going to show here today. Because I've sent them nothing and they've seen nothing. So let's let's see that I can uh, make sure that uh, I haven't I haven't uh, created some distrust here. All right, I just want to go through some of this. I'm going to talk some of this and I'll try to go through this as quickly as possible. Uh, I did put together a little keynote presentation. I guess I'll stand over here. Um, first, a little bit of housekeeping. Something about the procedures here uh, at the high school in terms of you now have four iPad carts. And we're going to talk about the differences between those carts. There are sets of two and two. We'll, we'll address that in a minute. Now, the card sign out, when I put this together, I wasn't sure if you were doing the Labarama. Uh, I wasn't clear on that as to whether or not you're doing paper. But as I understand it, you're doing the Labarama. So you're going to have online. Uh, ability to, from anywhere, it'd be, uh, I guess, web-based, that you'll be able to sign up for the cart. So you know, I guess, as you're doing your planning for the week, from, you know, and you're, you're setting that up, you'll know what access you have to what carts. Um, uh, that goes without saying, you're going to need to include your name, date, the period you're going to be using the carts. Teachers are in the Annex building, which I just found out we had an Annex building. So again, I'm really, really learning your district. Um, you can sign out the carts as well, the same procedures. And of course, I guess it makes the most sense to use whatever cart is closest to your room. We're going to talk about in a second here where these cart locations are. And you've seen this in an email, by the way. So if some of this looks redundant, you would have received an email a couple weeks ago from your vice principal about this information. Uh, these are the, the four places where the, the carts will be kept. They have been distributed throughout the school. They, the cart may have been kept in the media center last year. I don't know if that's the case. But now they're distributed throughout the school in these sections. And these are the teachers that are responsible for those carts. Now, that being said, you need to work with these teachers because they've, they've taken on that responsibility, and you need to help them maintain these carts. And what I mean by that is this. Make sure that the iPads are put back in numerical order. Every one of them now has a number, and they should be put back in a numerical order. That way it's easy to see when an iPad is missing or something is out of sequence. Um, also... Putting the, making sure that the cart is plugged in and that the connectors are plugged into the iPad. I mean, you can have the cart plugged in, but if the connector is up to each iPad is not plugged in, you're not going to be getting any charging, and a dead iPad might as well be uh, a doorstop. There are two different kind of connectors with the iPads. You have two separate types of carts. You have iPad 2s and iPad 3s. iPad 2s have the traditional 30-pin connector for many of you who have I iOS devices already. You're very familiar with the 30-pin connector. But they did move to the iPad 3, and when they did that, and also with the iPhones, they moved to the new um, lightning connector. Now, the difference is on the iPad 2, besides the fact that it's much bigger, it will only go in one way. 
So, of course, the responsibilities are signing it out for the instructional purposes. Make sure they are stored neatly. Don't leave it a mess for the next teacher that's going to be picking it up. Obviously, you have to keep your colleagues in mind. Um, also, this is kind of important because these are a limited or finite amount of space. Keep in mind that this is flash storage. This is not like a hard drive on a computer where they have mass storage quantities. These are, I think, 16 gigabyte models, and they only have so much capacity to store things. So when kids are putting things in, photos, saving documents, and so on and so forth, all that is filling up the iPad. Anything that they need, that they continue to need, they should be sending up to a storage place. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but they should get it off of the iPad if they're not going to be needing it. Otherwise, it just fills up the machine, and then someone else goes to use it, and they can't use it because now it's overloaded. So we want to make sure that they clear out things that uh, are not necessary. Of course, you want to handle them with care because these are, what, five, $600 devices? And uh, they're not cheap to, to uh, replace or repair in that respect. Any damage should be reported to uh, Amy Barron or Alicia Basillo. If I get that name, is that Basillo? Is that pronouncing that right? Okay. Um, Amy is in charge of uh, handling the updates on the iPad carts, and we'll be talking about the, the, the Dropbox thing. We'll be talking about that in a little bit. Um, if a student vandalizes the iPad, well, guess what? It's their responsibility. They've got to pay for it. It's, uh, it's school property. So, obviously, you don't expect that to happen, but I guess it has to be said. Um, and also monitoring the students' activities while they're in class, because obviously this is for instructional purposes, and uh, that's why the school district has made the investment, and especially the three additional carts here at the high school. So let me go over some of the basics. And this kind of graphic just kind of gives you an idea of what an iPad uh, has available to it. Besides the fact that it has a front and back camera, so that means you can take pictures on either side. Um, it has a microphone, headphone jack, so sound can go out from the iPad. It has its own built-in speaker 